So next up, um, we've got uh, Katarina, who is going to join us on the stage. I'm just taking a sneak peek at my, my notes. So Katrina uh, Osachenko, and I hope that I pronounced that right, uh, is an API technical writer and content developer at Wix.com. Uh, and she is going to be talking about uh, test developer experience, not code, which sounds uh, um, really interesting. Hi, Chris. Hi, Katarina. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you for joining us and for, for doing this and, and uh, yeah, for, for uh, doing the effort for preparing for yes, this. Yes, let's do this. <laughs> let's do this. I'll hand it over to you. Great. Okay, so I think we can start. Oh. Let me just see if I if I'm click sharing and clicking my slides. Okay, so hello everyone and welcome to Test Developer Experience, Not Code. My name is Kate and today I'm going to talk about ways to test developer experience, uh, how to avoid biases when designing docs for internal and external APIs and uh, how to balance complexity and simplicity in API references for seamless usability. Okay. okay, so to kick things off, a few words about me and what I do. Currently, I'm a technical writer at Wix, working on payments and financial services APIs and references. And the findings that I'm about to share are heavily based on real life events and my experience collaborating with teams of product people, developers, QAs, and other writers. So, so what do we know about API usability? Uh, and consequently, what do we think we know about corresponding API references? Some will say that tech writers wear many hats, as we are often involved in API design, documenting and reviewing stages, and QAing as much stuff as possible and advocating for documentation as a well-rounded product. As I dive deeper into internal and external API docs, I focus more and more on developer experience, uh, helping to identify biases towards how we think API references are used, gathering feedback on how people actually search for the right information and what can be improved structurally to help them find what they're looking for. So we know that APIs are complex. And there are many dependencies, and by the time we get from the design to the documentation stage, different people take ownership or add their input to the final product. So how can we better incorporate developer experience when designing APIs? I'd say that one of the starting points is asking yourself, does this make sense to someone who uses this API for the first time? What is the first and crucial thing that they're looking for and how do they search for it? Is it confusing or straightforward how to get to that final result? And is there context or is there too much context about, what, about what's happening on your side of the integration? Because quite often before people, people even get to code samples and descriptions, the one thing that they're scanning the docs for is an answer to the question, will this work for me? And can I integrate my app, service, or provider with this API? And you might develop certain biases when trying to cover these usability points. And it's not just about internal logic and how things operate on your side when you decide on the API structure and documentation layout. It's about that other person's perspective and compatibility on their side of integration and I'll touch more on that uh, for internal and external APIs. So how do we balance complexity and simplicity uh, when approaching API design? I'd say complexity by itself is neither good nor bad, it's confusion that is bad. So where can we go from here? I'd say ask questions about how developers look for answers. Because uh, everything starts with the search, 
but how do you ask for the right question when you're looking for the information that one key thing your entry point remember the last time you opened an api reference or how do you how did you even find the right api reference in the first place most probably you opened a developer portal search tab or q a section or and typed some keywords or you might even go to internal slack Slack channels and asking specific questions. And then someone is likely to send you a link to the latest version uh, of the information that you're looking for or confirm or deny your question. And often developers have specific typical questions and they start looking for answers in the most time efficient and common way possible. It became sort of a habit to scan through the docs and Google as much things as much as possible and looking for similar use cases to yours. There is too much information floating around and the way we double check its accuracy is through our practical experience and practical experience of others. And when there are many complex processes going on, people want to find the shortest bulletproof way to get to the point. And why do we double check by asking questions and looking for keywords? Because usually documentation covers everything, mm, everything inter in integration related from start to finish, general flows with multiple sections and steps. And you most probably want to make sure that your specific case is supported. You're likely looking for yes or no answer to your question. So what makes an API and supporting docs more usable? Another thing to remember is that people don't always know how to form the right question to get where they need to. Developers don't open the docs to admire our writing skills or amazing formatting or color coordinated blocks of text. They look for what works for their use cases and what we might pay more attention to uh, is um, knowing and really knowing who is our API consumer is and what is their work environment and setup. Uh, what, are, what, what are their way of working and habits? And what is the point entry and the use cases that they most, gr most gravitate to? Um, again, since information and the way we consume it is changing as well as uh, APIs. Uh, there are ways we can address um, uh, the search and cater more to how we present the information. So an interactive and up-to-date Q&A would definitely, definitely won't hurt. And you can document and cover related questions that come up frequently. Um, you can find out easy, easily about it by talking to your developers that you work with, talk to developers who have interactions with third-party developers and uh, just not letting the information slip and making sure you're taking notes and that feedback is processed. And if you can come up with some kind of interactive company or service specific stack overflow or answers with without uh, with with not just a did this work or was it helpful button but something that can be rated where questions can be rated where you can see what is mostly most frequently asked and then you can update the content and um, keep it approachable and usable so I, I would like to touch on the differences between external and internal API documentation and how we uh, approach the design in those different cases. Usually when we think about internal APIs, um, we usually uh, think about, let's say a team of developers who is working on their findings, uh, they develop an API, they document it, they bring a tech writer on board and uh, probably that's it. Uh, they completed the task, uh, the API exists, 
But then comes the time where you actually need to share it inside your organization. And then you need to think about dependencies and how do you actually keep it up to date and what, got, what comes next. So when thinking about internal APIs and supporting documentation, you need to distinguish what goes in details into internal docs, unlike external documentation and API as a product for third, third parties. Probably you would want to put as many details as possible so that not only developers from your team, but any interlinked teams can easily find it and uh, make their mind on how can they can interact with that. Uh, if you have uh, knowledge experts uh, that have the information, do try to document it and make sure it's shared and the knowledge is transferred, it's easily accessible, and it's not just dependent on one or two people in your company or your team. Um, that you can constantly ask them for the same question. And then it will be easier to track the progress, to track uh, dependencies and updates uh, whenever or if they happen. So, yep, defining dependencies and covering them in details is something that will greatly help you in keeping the docs up to date and making sure that you have a structure, you follow it, and everyone in your organization can uh, also find it easily and make sure that they can contribute. And when it comes to external APIs, I would say that a lot of times I hear more and more, and luckily I see more and more that people tend to treat it as a product. Um, so it, be it becomes a, an integral part. But in practice, mm, that, that doesn't usually work as great as it sounds uh, on paper. And um, I would say that if you treat ex external API as a product, um, you should treat your API reference as a product as, a product as well. Uh, you need to distinguish and realize that you cannot always easily transfer what was internal into external API. Some stuff are probably best left behind. You should keep it straightforward to the point, short and sweet. Not always people who are will be using your external APIs and references uh, are gonna need to know all the backend stuff that is happening on your side of integration. Probably they're looking for that one specific thing and it's something that I've heard a lot about QAs and developers that, uh, let's say, uh, we have an onboarding team and we have a set of documentation which is nicely organized and it covers everything from start to finish for, for the whole integration flow. But in 90% of cases, new uh providers and developers would come over and ask one specific questions is this supported is this payment method connected where do i find the specific information of how it is connected so again going back to straightforwardness to the point and making sure that people can easily search it and that your content is uh, optimized for search even if it's an internal search bar if it's an answers if it's uh, knowledge base articles it's something that you want to refer people uh, it's something that you want to uh, be referable easily and something that if you know it's repeated over and over you want to make it set in writing and make it shareable and Mm, super short is not always the best option, but you can support and not distract your API reference with visuals and diagrams. Again, if your structure is more complicated, if the background processes are overwhelming, try to find ways of um, not simplifying it, but make it more digestible and usable so that people can get the whole picture right away somewhere in the beginning of your API reference. And then you go straight to the point and people can just 
scan your dogs and find the things that they're looking for. And you need to make sure that you're not only gathering the feedback, but incorporating it and it is reflected in your usability. I cannot stress enough how many times we would get the same questions, but sometimes the workload is so great and velocity is the thing that we keep in mind and things are developing and moving uh, so fast and rapid. But you need to make sure, even if there's only one tech writer on board, you need to prioritize the feedback, the actual feedback that you're getting from developers who are using your external APIs. Because once you miss or delay on that feedback, it just reflects on the overall experience and usability moving forward. And it's something that uh, you will keep uh, uh, returning to and get, getting back to over and over. So to sum up, I might say that uh, distinguishing between internal and external APIs is very important. Uh, you need to have resources uh, to determine what things can be transferred from internal to external APIs. Uh, make sure you're taking into consideration your audience, uh, the habits of how people consume your APIs, knowing their work environment, and making sure that you keep stuff up to date and that you bring as much collaborators on board as possible and keeping things uh, transparent. Uh, even though, again, you might not have all the resources right away, you might not have all the time right away, but sometimes when you're constricted with resources, uh, when you're limited in time, you can come up, that's, that's the environment when you where you come up with the most creative ways of how to uh, come up with solutions. And again, I cannot stress enough that communication is usually the key. Uh, again, between your internal teams, it doesn't matter if your company or organization is bigger or smaller. If you can define dependencies, at least between two teams who use one internal API, you can then kind of get the structure uh, of what's uh, of how things can turn out, turn out and uh, move forward and. Uh, expand. So I'll be wrapping things up and thank you so much for joining uh, my talk and to compensate for the lack of more engaging illustrations and gifts. Here's a picture of uh, my um, team, my uh, uh, review partner my uh, doggo who is kind of looking at me and saying, Kate, did you really think of all the developer experience? Uh, did you do your peer review? And um, this is something that I highly suggest to everyone not to skip on that, even if, again, you're limited in resources, but make sure you double check with real people, uh, real subject, uh, subject experts that your dogs are usable and they make sense. So I think we'll be moving to Q&A soon. So thank you so much for, for the time. It flew by so fast, but yeah. Th thank you, Katarina. Um, th thank you for an interesting, really interesting talk. Um, I think one of, the, one of the things that I've realized that's like the, the super skill, um, especially in documentation, uh, but but pretty much actually across the board, is is empathizing and like and putting yourself sure. into the head of other people, and um, like and and because you have to bridge like both the internal and the external side, like how do you how do you do this practically? What are do you have any tricks for for getting into an empathy? Uh, mindsets with different audiences? Oh, for sure. Um, I think one of the things that I turn to the most is trying to kind of get into people's shoes. Again, uh, I as a tech writer, I don't have like 20 years of developer experience per se. And the best thing that I can do is communicate with different people starting from 
product owners, developers, and QAs, and see what their daily routine is and see how they use the information and APIs. And whenever I collaborate with developers on in APIs and just starting from proto files, from bare bones of the APIs, um, I ask them, um, I usually ask them questions of uh, how would they use it if they would see it for the first time. And again, um, as I mentioned, I try to QA as much stuff myself as possible. And I try to see where do I stumble, where do I hit, um, where do I hit uh, the wall, and uh, then I come back with my results and findings to whoever I'm working with, and I just try to show them. Okay, so this is the process that I'm going for, going through. Uh, I'm still trying to use uh, the best of my knowledge with uh, development and engineering that is in with it that is within my skill set, mm -hmm. and uh, you would be surprised how often people assume that okay, uh, here's our API. Probably it will be used by, let's say, a developer. Uh, mm -hmm. not senior, not junior, not whatever level, a developer, it will make sense to them. You would be surprised how many times uh, uh, I spoke to um, people who were using our e external APIs, and it's not the code that they had difficulties with. It was actually understanding our process, because uh, sometimes we tend to develop those biases and we try to put everything that we think is necessary and helpful for the people, because we don't usually put ourselves in their shoes. And uh, we shouldn't assume, I would say, assume less and double check as much as possible and just try to get on a human level with the person that you're working with. Uh, of course, business is the end goal, but before you get to that goal, it's the whole process of getting there and working on solutions with real humans and people. And then you set up the interaction that API is taking care of. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. It's that interaction mm -hmm. between the model in our heads and, uh, and what we're doing. And then the model in the heads of the people we need to interact with that might be completely different that that really makes makes this really difficult sometimes. Uh, uh, yeah. Think, yeah. And how um, I had, we had a question from the uh, from Christoph, who is in the audience, who asked if you have any examples of tools for API diagrams. Hmm. Uh, um, I saw what what I what I usually use is something like uh, Drovio or mm -hmm. any tool that helps you to put just play around with different setups. Uh, I would say that at the moment, Trovio is the most useful, is something that I find the most useful. Um, there's, um, there's another one that's mostly used by product owners, but it helps to set nice uh, diagrams as well. I'm blanking at the moment, but um, but again, uh, if anyone if anyone is interested, I would be happy to continue the conversation. And I would say that I'm always on the lookout for uh, great tools that are simple and don't require a lot of setup. So feel free to reach me through my email or LinkedIn and uh, yeah. Anything that's besides Trovio, or um, I'm truly blinking, but it's something that no uh, we use a lot. Yeah. But yeah, it's like uh, Paul, uh, Paul was saying that he's using OmniGraphel uh, on a Mac and mm. Lucy Charts in Confluence. Oh, yeah. yeah, 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 Lucy Charts for sure. Yeah. That's useful again if you're using Confluence, and I think most of us do or did at some point. So, yeah, that's something. Yeah. It, it's kind of my pet peeve, like you know, the the whole wiki thing. <laughs> Just, I, know, uh... I know. And but don't let perfectionism don't let yeah. perfectionism just uh, stop you. Because when it comes to uh, like wrapping things up, it can be tricky to know where to stop. So 
And I guess this is our time up. So that, that's our time to stop. <laughs> thank, thank you very much for doing this talk. Um, Likewise, yeah. it was amazing. Thanks for having me. And um, yeah, hopefully see you at one of the future events in, in the near around. future. Yeah, for sure. Thank, thank you so you, much. Yep. Bye, Bye, everyone.